guys, how's it going? I uh, hope you enjoyed that little looping demonstration at the start. Don't worry, we're not going to be looking at all that sort of crazy stuff today. This lesson is for my beginner students who are just starting out with chords. It's a great song with two chords and yeah, two chords and simple chords to get you started. So I'll just play play it on its own now without all the loop and stuff. Two, three, four. So firstly, let's just look at how to play the chords. So there's two chords to this song, E minor. So the way I play it, I have an open E string, my middle finger on second fret A string, ring finger second fret D, and then open G, open B, and open E. If you want, if you find it easier, you're welcome to use your pointer finger and your middle finger. So yeah, it doesn't really matter, but I that's just much more comfortable for me. And then uh, the way I tell kids to remember this song is, uh, we remember this chord, sorry. It's, I call it the Spider-Man chord, because it looks like the Spider-Man hand. Anyway, so that's your first chord. Next, this one is called D6 add nine. But all you need to remember is you've got your ring finger on 2nd fret G string and your middle finger on 2nd fret E. And we're strumming all our strings for each chord. So now let's look at how we would transition between the chords. If I'm using these two fingers, my middle finger and ring finger, all you have to do is move your ring finger down a string and your middle finger up a string. So notice when I change the chord, there's not a lot of movement in my fingers. The biggest mistake I see students make when changing chords is they'll take all their fingers off and then have to put them down again. So the less you can move your fingers, the easier it's gonna be. Just to recap, we've got two chords, E minor, open E, 2nd fret A, 2nd fret D, open G, open B and open E, and then D6 add 9, where we've moved our ring finger to 2nd fret G string, and our middle finger to 2nd fret E string. So we've looked at the chords, now let's look at our strumming pattern. So when we strum the E minor, it's going to go like this. So that's down, down, up, down, down, up. And I like to emphasize those down strums. Three, four, down, down, up, down, down, up. So if I count the beats out, it's one, two, three, four, and So I'm just going to play it on a loop now. Great, so I'll play it for a little bit longer. I'm going to count to four and see if you can join me. So we start after four. A one, two, three, four. So that's our first half of the strumming pattern. Uh, next, when we change to that D6 add 9, 
It's going to go down, up, down, up, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up, up, down, up. Might do that a bit slowly. Down, up, down, up, up, down, up. So I'll just play that on a loop for a little bit. Down, up, down, up. So now again, I'll count to four and see if you can play along with me. A one, two, three, four. Hopefully you're with me so far. What we'll do now is I'm going to put it all together. So we started on E minor and it goes down, down, up, down, down, up. Switch to D6 add 9. Down, up, down, up, up, down, up. So E minor. Down, down, up, down, down, up. D6 add 9. Down, up, down, up. Up, down, up. So I think each chord and strumming is not too hard, but now the challenge is changing the chord in time. So what we might do first is I'm going to just hold the E minor chord, but go through the whole strumming pattern. So once you can do that, it's time to then just have a go try making that change. So let's go through some tips on um, improving our chord changes or if we're having trouble with our chord changes, some strategies of how to improve. So. The first strategy I've got is, instead of doing the strumming pattern, maybe you just need to work on changing chords faster. So we're going to just do all down strums. And we'll do four strums each chord, and then change. Keeping a steady rhythm. So if that's if that's really easy, we speed it up. One, two, three, four, change, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, change, two, three, four. If that's easy, we speed it up again. One, two, three, four, change, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, change, two, three, four. And then once you're playing it about that fast. It's time to introduce the strumming pattern back in. Um, so when I do that though, we're going to slow it down. Down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up. So you just find a speed that you can do the actual strumming pattern and make the change on time and keep doing that until it's easy. Doesn't matter how slow you need to make it. And 
then if that's easy, we speed it up. Until we've got it to the speed that we're happy with. Cool, so hopefully you've got those two chords down and you're strumming away. Um, we're going to look at one more thing now. What we're going to look at is just how to give it a bit of flavour, make it sound, sound closer to the original. So if we're just doing strumming, so it sounds really nice, but it hasn't quite got that flavour just yet. So the way I like to add that in, um, the first thing we're going to do is on, I've got the strumming pattern on the screen, on the red arrows, those red down arrows, we're just going to hit our bass note, our top string. So that'll sound like this. So same, same strumming, strumming pattern and everything. It's just that on those red arrows, those red down arrows, instead of strumming through all my strings, I'm just hitting the top string instead. And just that one little trick, I think, sort of gives it a bit more flavour. So then one more thing we can do to yeah, keep adding a bit more flavour. Well, we're going to still also hit, just hit that top string on the red down strums, but I'm going to do what's called palm muting. So if you've never done palm muting before, what we're going to do is pretend you're going to do a karate chop, chop, and karate chop, but don't actually karate chop because you'll break your guitar, but put your karate chop like your bridge softly. A soft karate chop is what it is. So get it perfectly in line with the bridge and then bring it over like that. Now you should get this sound. If you get this sound, where it's dead, you just need to pull your palm back like that. So the dead sound just means you've come too far forward up the strings. If you get this sound, that means you're on the bridge of the guitar and you need to just shift it up a little bit. So that sound where the note's dead, but it still rings out. So I'm going to do that on those red down strums. So you'll probably need to start slowly. Whatever speed's comfortable for you and work your way up. Cool. Um, so yeah, hope all that helps. Uh, feel free to message me in the comments or uh, I'll have my email at the end of the video. You're welcome to send me an email if you have any questions. Current students, you've got my number. You're welcome to text me if you have any questions about this. Um, so just to wrap up with the video, I'm going to play the whole strumming pattern a few more times. Cool. I hope you had fun with that, guys.